I'll kind of just give you a little bit of a background in the in the history. Um, it really started um, way back in uh, with the Astrodome uh, in 66 was the first synthetic down fiber. And if you actually go back a little bit before that, the US government um, realized after the Korean War that uh, the city slickers were not very fit, but the country folk were fit. So they thought they needed to get um, some more passive areas or synthetic uh, grass areas uh, within towns. And they got Monsanto to um, produce what was uh, originally called uh, chem grass, uh, an artificial grass, which was renamed uh, after the first one was put down in the uh, classic or iconic stadium, um, the Astrodome. And that started the first uh, 1G synthetic grass. It was a 20 to 25 mil nylon product with no infill. Uh, in this case, it was laid on concrete with a thumb, uh, or, and it could, could be laid straight over asphalt. It was extremely tough. Nylon is extremely tough. Uh, it's very tightly knitted together. Um, so the fibers stood up and uh, it tore shreds <laughs> off um, people's knees and elbows and that it was extremely abrasive and um, they had a fair um, concussion wise, they had a few uh, uh, those as well. So then we effectively uh, started to move on and try and find other products and the uh, the 2G fields then came out in the 1970s, which they swapped over to polypropylene. Still fibres around the uh, 25 to 30 mil, and but this time they actually put sand in. And the reason why they put sand in is the whole idea of synthetic grass is to try and mimic natural grass. And to do that, the fibres must stand up. If they fall over or crush over, then you end up sliding or they become very slippery. So the polyethylene was slightly more um, softer in, in terms of its feel. Um, and a lot of the uh, original polypropylenes were what we call um, a tape. And I'll explain that a little bit later on what that means. The real breakthrough came in the 90s and there was um, a couple of um, manufacturers that uh, really wanted to uh, improve the uh, the playability, I suppose, of, of the fibre. And there was a move to um, change the fibre into polyethylene. Now, polyethylene is exactly what uh, shopping bags are made of, no different. Um, and so you rub your hand on a shopping bag and you can feel the softness. So all of a sudden they had a, a much better product that from a playability point of view, you didn't get that um, the old carpet burns as um, a lot of Australians probably still think when we mention synthetic grass to them. The difference between the, old sh the shopping bag and uh, synthetic grass is the resins. And so it's the UV light that breaks down polyethylene. And so resins that they combine within the fibre itself, um, within the product itself, protects the fibre from breaking down under UV light. They then move to a longer pile. If you see generation three there, you've got tall, tall piles. What um, there was a big breakthrough that uh, all the previous uh, generation one and two had been knitted into basically a backing, and it was only about uh, three to four mil apart. The big breakthrough was they realised that if they wind it out to sixteen or even to nineteen mil, twenty mil, and they put the sand in, the sand held the fibres up, and then they put recycled rubber in or crumbed rubber. All of a sudden, you had a product that when you played on it with studs, it performed nearly the same or you know, effectively the same as grass. So when we think about playing on natural grass and you're playing with um, studded boots, the traction that you get is actually in the dirt. It's in the sand profile. It's not on the grass. And so previous synthetic fields, generation two, and that, because they were so tight, you couldn't get the studs down into the sand to actually get any grip. So they um, quite often they was quite slippery. So this was a big change in um, um, synthetic grass in terms of matching and uh, effectively at that stage, we've now got a product that um, could be considered as good as uh, grass, apart from one criteria, um, which we always have an issue with, is heat. But every other element from the, the, the way the ball moved on it, the, um, the way it drained, the way the players twisted and moved and, and played, uh, the way they landed on it and the, the softness, they'd now produced a product 
that could match uh, effectively natural grass. And that was the big change um, through the, um, the 1990s into the 2010s. The sand and rubber, there's um, a couple of the, the main players um, in terms of um, AstroTurf and uh, field turf um, changed uh, the infill ratios, um, started to change a little. And um, there was a, a couple of unique things that field turf um, uh, patented that um, kind of pushed the um, performance uh, to another level as well. And one, one was in the backing. Um, most of the uh, products uh, will get to a, a made up of a two layer backing. So the fibers um, stitched into it and stitches up uh, down and up uh, through a like an open uh, weave, a bit like um, what we um, uh, you have it in the you, some people put it in the gardens to keep their weeds down. It's like a black cloth that is porous, lets the water through, but it's a black weaved. Uh, that's what um, the backing looks like. And then there's a second backing that goes across to um, effective, effectively glue or fix the fibers into place. Otherwise, you'd just be pulling them out. Um, which is normally, uh, in some cases, it's a latex backing. So 